But for me, I had a really good chemistry teacher in high school, and he always kept me interested, and he always made it fun. I've also always been a big number person, so mixing science and numbers was always very interesting to me, and that's why I've always been attracted to chemistry. It does take time to adjust your schedule and make it the way that you need it to be in order to get what you need to get done. It's also hard to manage your time with your social life and your sports or your fraternities or sororities, but you just have to find the right schedule for you and make sure that it works best. So I would have to say that it all depends on what type of studier you are. Some people do better in big groups with people in their class discussing the topics of what they're studying or quizzing each other. Others do better locked in a room by themselves or at a table, sitting in the library quietly, listening to music. It all depends on what you do best and what helps you study better. I also recommend study breaks. Study breaks help you take your mind off of what you're studying and when you come back you have a fresh perspective and it'll be easier to catch on to. Some things that I would like to tell an incoming freshman is to make sure that they always have fun. They need to make sure that they make the best out of a bad situation and to never wish the time away. Another thing you might need is good time management, so make sure you work on that and to make sure that you don't stress too much. Everything works out in the end. So in this video, we're going to be talking about theoretical yields. In our last video, we talked about the limiting reagent and access reagent in different chemical equations. If you can remember how y'all worked out the sample problems and the worksheet from last time, then this will catch on pretty quick. So before we get started, let's talk about the definition of a theoretical yield. A theoretical yield is the maximum amount of product that can be produced in a reaction, or it is the amount that should be able to be produced based on the limiting reagent. You do not need to get the theoretical yield and the actual yield mixed up. The actual yield is the amount that is actually produced based on an experiment and is typically given in the problem. You don't have to really worry about the actual yield until our next video when we talked about percent yields. Another thing you might need to know is that by solving for the limiting reagent in the process, you also solve for the amount of the product. The amount of the product in grams is the theoretical yield. So you need to remember that the theoretical yield answer is always going to be in grams. So before we get started on any sample problems, let's go over the five easy steps to determining the theoretical yield. Step one is going to be look at the equation and make sure that it is balanced, and if it is not, then to balance it. Step two is to determine the limiting reagent. So we did this in our last video, so step three, four, and five to find the theoretical yield actually go over the same process that we did in our last video. So step three is to determine the molar ratio of the limiting reagent reactant to the product. Step four, given the molar ratio, determine how many moles of product you should yield. And step five is to convert the moles of product to grams of the product. So now that we've got the definition understood, let's go ahead and start a sample problem. The problem reads, for this balance equation shown, if 59.3 grams of CH2S were reacted with 80.6 grams of O2, how many grams of SO3 would be produced? So let's start off with our first step, which is to see if our equation is balanced. And as you can see, it is already balanced for us, and it says it in the question as well. Step two is to find the limiting reagent. And like I said before, to find the limiting reagent, you're going to go through steps three, four, and five of this as well. So let's go ahead and start off with our 59.3 grams of CH. S. So first we have to start with step three, which is to find the mole ratio. So we need the molar mass of CH2S, and I've already worked that out. It's 46.08 grams under one mole. Now we need to do step four, which is to determine the moles of the product. And as you can see in our equation up here, that there is only one mole of CH2H2S, and there's only one mole of sulfur trioxide. 
And for the fifth step, we need to convert the moles into grams. So you start off with the one mole of SO3, and I've already got the molar mass of sulfur trioxide worked out, and it is 80.07 grams. So when you punch all of that in your calculator, you're going to get an answer that is 103.4 grams of sulfur trioxide. So now we have to do the same thing we just did, but for the 80.6 grams of O2 that is given in the problem. So starting with step three again, the molar mass for O2 is going to be 18. And then you put it under moles. You're going to determine the moles. And as you can see right here, that there are three moles of O2, so we're going to put a three right there. And there's still only one mole of SO3. And then once again, we're going to convert it to grams. There's still just one mole of SO3. And the molar mass is 80.07 grams. And when you punch that in your calculator, you're going to get an answer. It's going to be 67.23 grams of sulfur trioxide. So as you can see with our answers here, our limiting reagent is going to be O2. Just for a note, since you found the theoretical yield of one of the products when finding the limited reagent, only one calculation is necessary. Therefore, the theoretical yield for this problem is going to be the 67.23 grams of sulfur trioxide that you found. Now that we've done one problem together, let's go ahead and start your problem on your own. We're going to do one more problem together. So this problem reads, for the balanced equation shown, if 11 grams of CH3COF were reacted with 4.97 grams of H2O, how many grams of CH3COOH would be produced? So we're going to go through the steps again, and as you can read in the problem, it says that it is already balanced for, so step one is done. Step two is to find the limiting reagent. So we'll have to go through those three, four, and five steps again. We're going to start off with our 11 grams of CH3COF. And for step three, we're going to do the mole ratio, and the molar mass for CH3COF is already worked out for me. It's going to be 62 grams of CH3COF under one mole. Now for step four, we need to determine the moles of the product. As you can see, the moles for CH3COF is only one. And the moles for what we're trying to find, which is CH3COOH, is one as well. And for the fifth step, we need to convert the moles to grams for the answer. So, the start off with one mole on the bottom. And the molar mass for CH3COH is going to be 60 grams. Now, when you put all that in your calculator, you'll get an answer of 10.65 grams of the acidic acid. So we're going to start that process over with our 4.97 grams of water. So to start off, we're going to get the molar mass of water, which is 18, into one mole. Now for step four, we're going to determine the moles of the products. And as you can see in the problem, there's only one mole of H2O and still only one mole of CH3COOH. Now for the fifth step, we're going to convert it to grams once again, starting with one mole.
and the molar mass is still 60. So your answer here is going to be 16.59 grams of acetic acid. And as you can see, comparing these two answers, a CH3COF is going to be your limiting reagent. And since CH3COF is your limiting reagent, then 10.65 grams is going to be your theoretical yield for this problem.